Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to our Florida Property Masterclass as part of our month-long digital event with A Place in the Sun. We've given Richard, your host, for the previous uh, three sessions a little bit of a break, and you've now got me. My name's Andy Bridge from A Place in the Sun. And in this session, we're talking all about currency ex exchange and strategies to save yourself time, money, and effort when transferring sterling into US dollars or indeed bringing it back the other way. And we're joined by Robin Haynes of A Place in the Sun Currency to talk us through that. Good afternoon, Robin. Good afternoon, Andy. Good afternoon, everyone. You're well? All right, thank you. Yes, nice bit of late summer sun, isn't it, today? So uh, I'm sure it won't last, but it's been nice. Absolutely. And clearly, there's nothing more that anybody wants to do on a Sunday afternoon with the sun out and talk about foreign exchange. Why is it, <laughs> why, why, why is it, why is it an important element of uh, buying or selling an overseas property? Uh, well, it's, it's one of the most important aspects of, a, of the transaction when you're buying uh, or selling property overseas. And it's often something that people don't look at until quite late um, in the day in, in terms of the transaction. So um, it's, it's certainly worth researching earlier than most people do and actually getting a handle on what's happening with exchange rates, how that affects your budget. Um, and it's not the most exciting part of buying property overseas, but it's uh, something that people should look at early on in their research. Well, I think saving money is exciting. And um, I know because we've done this uh, similar sort of webinar when we've done different country uh, property masterclasses, that the avenues that people typically use, and most people still use their high street bank. Why, um, why do you advise against that? Uh, yeah, I think it's about a 50-50 split um, overall in terms of people who will use their bank and people who use a, an independent broker. Um, the bank's exchange rates don't tend to be very good. They rely on you just going in and sending your money and not really checking whether the rate they offer is very competitive or not. Uh, and of course, banks are expensive businesses to run. So you can use an independent broker instead, um, FCA regulated and, and secure service you can get a much better deal by getting a much better exchange rate than the banks will, will typically offer. Uh, and that could offer you a saving that runs into thousands of pounds or sometimes into five figures just on the, the difference in the rates on a particular day. So why is that? Is it because this is your specialism and the bank's doing a, a whole bunch of other activity? Yeah, that's certainly part of it. A bank's a much bigger machine. Um, the Ultimately, it's a very similar system. You can buy your currency from us and we can send it, you can buy a currency from your bank and they can send it. The difference is that the, the margin uh, that a bank will typically work to is, is much, much wider than a, a small, an independent company uh, will be able to offer. So um, usually it's actually quicker using a broker than a bank as well, because we know what we're doing. This is what we do all day, every day. Um, so we can get things processed more quickly. So not only can you find a, a cheaper service, but also uh, a better service at the same time. And specifically, a place in the sun currency. Then, why is that different to uh, you know? There's a lot of currency companies out there. Uh, a lot of them active in this market. You specifically look after British buyers, sort of buying and selling an overseas property. That's a that's a further specialism, is it? Absolutely, yes. There are lots of companies out there. Um, some are very good, some less so. So that there is a mixed bag out there. Uh, and when we set a place in the sun currency up, it's because the team at a place in the sun saw a need for a specialist service that is just dedicated to people buying and selling property overseas. So because that's all we do, we know the process involved, we know how the legal systems work in different countries, we know how the banking systems work in different countries, uh, and we can really provide some extra value in terms of our day-to-day -day experience for anyone that's moving money for that property purchase. And that can be for continuous payments as well once somebody owns a property? Uh, yes, of course, we, we can send any amount for people. So whether it's uh, a deposit for a property, uh, completion or stage payments, or, or whether it's actually a few hundred dollars to uh, pay your, your pool man, um, those transactions we can, can, can cater for. So obviously the financial saving is, is much bigger on a larger transaction, uh, but we do find that once people have used the service for their larger transactions, they'll tend to continue using it ongoing because it's a, a very convenient and easy way to get your money abroad as well. Well, Jacinta O'Reilly has found the, uh, the question icon on the screen. So please do follow Jacinta's example and send your questions for Robin. Uh, I will put them to him on your behalf. 
just into us as, as cut right to the chase says so how does it work with fees basically yeah so uh, the only ch uh, charge that we would make would be 10 pounds for a dollar transfer so if you're sending a, a payment to the us that would be a 10 pound charge uh, we waive that for larger payments so if it's over thirty thousand sterling so typically for your payments for your property there'll be no charges at all um, obviously the business make, has to make money um, so we have a margin built into the exchange rate that we offer um, so there's no other commissions or fees or, or hidden charges to, to worry about uh, we think that's a nice transparent way to, to offer the service so let's just explore that a little bit more so if I go onto Google and I find out the exchange rate um, different brokerages and different banks indeed can then just offer a wider margin on that rate as to what they offer the consumer rather than the actual bank rate is that how is that how it works yeah it, exactly right so if you go to google and uh, look for the exchange rate you'll see what's called the mid market rate uh, and that's the average between all the transactions going through uh, in in big banks and clearing houses between the buying and selling rate so it tells you where the the very peak of the market rate is at that moment um, now we can't buy quite at that rate ourselves and indeed nobody can because it's an average between buying and selling rates but the closer you get to the rate that you see online the better your better deal you're getting effectively so um, typically a bank rate might be anything between one and three or four percent below that mid-market rate uh, and our saving is offered by getting you much much closer to it for, for your transactions okay so let's let's just think now about the typical property purchase or or indeed the timeline for somebody making an inquiry with a place in the sun currency and getting the help because there's 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 further assistance rather than just the exchange rate i guess uh yeah absolutely that's the other big difference so with your bank uh for example you will just when you need some money you go in and send your money and that's it um whereas when you're buying a property actually you want some most people want a bit more help than that uh, they'd like to know what's happening with rates, they'd like to know what's happened historically, what sort of things are coming up that might move the exchange rate. Um, so that's why we would always recommend as soon as you start looking in you know, any seriousness at, at going on trips and looking at properties, uh, to speak to us from that point because we can actually handhold you through the whole process, let you know when rates are up or down or how much help you might need. Um, to help you making sensible decisions about when to buy your currency. Uh, and of course, if you have a good strategy and, and actually look at what's happening with, with exchange rates, with our assistance, you've got a much better chance of getting a good deal uh, than you have if you just leave it to the last minute and buy your currency without really trying to think through how you're approaching that whole thing. So what alternatives are there to buying the currency when you need it? So you can, uh, we, you can buy in advance. So we have a, an option that's called a forward contract. Um, and that's a very useful tool if you know you've got a, a payment coming up, for example, typically for your completion or closing payment uh, in the future. Let's say the exchange rate is looking quite good. You've got your closing payment to make in six weeks, for example. You haven't got all your money yet. Well, actually, you might think, I'll just have to wait until I've got my money and hope the rate's still as good as it is. But actually, we can offer by using a forward contract the, op the opportunity to secure a rate in advance of that payment so that you know exactly what you need to find in sterling and you can lock in when rates are good. So again, another little bit of helpful uh, handholding and, and thinking through things can save a, a significant amount. So how, how would that work in practice then? What would I need to do to be able to affect that, um, that forward that you've explained? Yeah, so you would need a 10% deposit. So if you had, for example, £100,000 worth of dollars that you knew you needed to buy in six weeks' time, you could give us a ring, ask us for a forward rate. If you're happy with the, the rate that we're offering, you can ask us to go ahead and secure it. You'd then pay us a 10% deposit, which in this case would be 10,000 uh, sterling, making the numbers easy for my uh, Sunday afternoon arithmetic. Uh, and then the 90,000 balance you'd pay in six weeks and then off go your dollars at the pre-agreed rate. So meanwhile, you can forget about what the rate's doing. You're not gonna have to monitor it every day. You know you've got a deal you're happy with and you know down to the cent how many dollars are going to be going across in six weeks. Uh, which can, can help you uh, sleep at night, I think, a little bit better, especially with, with how volatile uh, rates have been in the last 12 months and, and are likely to be over the winter, I think. 
Yeah, I guess so. Wider geopolitical events have impacts on currency rates. I mean, just because you're a broker, you don't you don't have a crystal ball. You don't know wh which way it's going to go, do you? No, I wish we did. Um, but everything we've tried on that's uh, that crystal balls all had to go in the bin. Unfortunately, they don't, don't seem to work. So all you can do really is take a sensible approach um, to think what might happen. Look at your budget. Look at where the rates have been recently, and, and try and work out um, a sensible plan. I mean, the big events over the last twelve months um, are no secret. We've had uh, the UK election. We've had the COVID crisis, massively affecting exchange rates. So the dollar uh, last December was up at about one thirty-five to the pound. Uh, in March, um, at the beginning of UK lockdown, it dropped down to about one fifteen. So just in a few months, we saw a 17% increase in the cost of a dollar. Um, and obviously, if you're buying a property through that period, a um, couple of hundred thousand dollar property, that's a, a difference of, I think it's about 27,000 pounds sterling difference on the budget because of those events. Um, thankfully, the, the rates improved uh, since. So we're actually back up at a, a pretty good rates against the dollar, um, which is nice because against many other currencies that's not currently true uh, we've got the u.s election coming up we've got uh, potentially more covid problems over the winter we've got the uk economy recovering or not so there's so many things going on that will affect exchange rates over the, the next few months um, that make it more important than ever to to really manage your your risk to that if you're buying a property i think that's an important point because ultimately if you're just buying on the day you don't know what the final price is going to be do you Exactly. I mean, it's all very well negotiating uh, the best deal you can in, in dollars and getting a price you think you're happy with. But of course, until you actually book a rate for your currency, your sterling price for your property is fluctuating day by day, depending on the exchange rate. So it's just as important as negotiating a good price with, with your, your seller and your agent. Uh, it's more important, arguably, to get a good exchange rate. So the two really need to go hand in hand uh, to, to look at your overall uh, deal that you're getting when you're buying. And on the forward, I guess, if if the rate improved, then you don't benefit from that strengthening rate, do you? But neither do you lose out if the if the exchange rate weakens. So basically, you know what you're going to pay. Exactly. Yes. It's peace of mind, really, uh, and locking into a rate when you're happy with it. So you're controlling the situation rather than letting it uh, control you. Um, you are right. If, the, if you fix a rate and, and then the exchange rate improves, you, you don't benefit from that. But the, the downside uh if the rate were to fall away you'll be very pleased you you booked it in advance but i think um it's important not to become a sort of amateur currency speculator and remember that you are dealing with usually a lifestyle decision um and, and something that you want to do for your own reasons and you're not really trying to bet and gamble on, on exchange rates so while it's good to get an idea of what's happening and, and why um, when, you know, as soon as you start getting a bit too involved, you can overthink it somewhat as well. It's no one knows what's going to happen, unfortunately. And do most people then who are buying an overseas property with you, is 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 the forward a, a popular product? Yeah, uh, it is. Yes, uh, especially at the moment, we've seen seen a lot more interest uh, over the last couple of months because we don't know what's happening over the winter, particularly with with Brexit trade talks. Um, some people, of course, if, if you have, if you're lucky enough to have your whole budget available in, in sterling and have all your money ready now, you can just buy all your currency in advance anyway and, and pay for it all and have it all ready. So there, there are different options depending on your own financial circumstances, your budget, your timescales and your plans. So we would work with everyone on an individual basis with their own account manager who gets to know them and their requirements to try and offer them the best tools and options that, that will be useful for their situation. But the percentage that you need to put down of a forward, what did you say that was earlier? Uh, it's ten percent. I mean, we can do it for a little bit less sometimes if it's if it's not for a, a long period of time. So ten percent is the standard, but um, it, it can be reduced if, uh, if that helps. Okay. And uh, a question in from Sonia, who's asking about. Um, well, it brings up an important point. She's nervous about giving money to a to a, to an independent broker. Banks might be safer. Let just talk us through. Um, the safeguards that are in place and then let's also go on to discuss the actual flow of the money and where it goes and when it goes. Sure yeah it's a very important point thank you for the question um, and I think it's something that 
probably does mean that some people still go to their bank and, and don't really look into independent brokers. But once you do start to do your research, you'll see that the, the industry is now FCA regulated. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that means we are uh, subject to financial ombudsman if anyone has any complaints, which thankfully we, we very, very rarely see. Uh, it also means that we have safeguarded client accounts for, for customer funds while they're with us. We have a certain minimum amount of capital that we have to keep in the business to, to be robust. Um, so there, there are a number of safeguards around the industry now. Um, if you're dealing with an FCA regulated company, you really should have no problems, but I would also recommend checking, checking reviews that uh, previous customers have left as you should with any financial service. And you'll also get a good idea just by chatting on the phone to a company as to how you think, how well you think they're going to look after you as an individual. So if you're speaking to more than one currency company, you'll very quickly form an opinion of who you think is going to be, be helpful, but do check for that FCA regulation. Um, I would personally recommend using UK based companies because then you know your banking's in the UK, the people you're speaking to are in the UK, if there are any problems you have the financial ombudsman uh, and I think that's a more comfortable way to deal with any financial service personally. Um, but it is very safe and secure now and, and as uh, we'll go on to, to discuss the time that client funds are with us is usually very very short indeed as well. Okay so um, I've um... I, I've registered with you as a potential buyer. We've had a chat about exchange rates, but I'm not really too excited about that at the moment. I'm off in Florida looking at the property and I phone up to say I'm, I'm going to put down a reservation fee or indeed I get back to the UK and I want to pay a, a deposit. What's the, what, what's the journey of the money from one bank account to another? Yeah, this is, it's very simple and straightforward. So again, it's not something um, that is a, a particularly complicated or, or hard thing for people to do and we've made it as simple and straightforward as possible because you want to make your life easier when you're buying a property not harder um, so you can bring us up for a quote and if you said okay i need to send ten thousand dollars out as a deposit for argument's sake we would give you an exact rate which gives you an exact sterling amount to buy, buy those dollars and you could then instruct us if you're happy with the rate to go ahead and buy the currency for you so we would buy the dollars at the agreed rate before you send us a penny so you know exactly what you're getting which i think is important from a control point of view <coughs> excuse me and uh, after that we give you a couple of days to settle the sterling so you would send the sterling from your uk bank account to our uk client bank account as soon as that's landed with us we'd obviously send you a receipt and then we'll be ready to transfer your dollars on at your instruction whether that's over to your property agent, your solicitor, your title company, or wherever it may need to go. So the whole process is extremely quick. Usually within 24 hours of, of placing an order, you can have your dollars in an account in, in the States um, if, if you need to move quickly. So the money actually doesn't sit in your client account for, for a substantial period of time. It's really just passing through on its way yep. to a no, destination account. Exactly. It's a very quick uh, and an efficient service because it's people buying property we want your money there quickly you need your money there quickly um, and that's what we'll do sometimes we're asked to hold funds for, for a little period if you're awaiting a final go ahead from a solicitor or you're waiting for something to actually go ahead with the transaction so we can do that you can say okay hold on to my dollars i'll give you a ring in the next few days when i'm ready to send them uh, but typically they would be straight in and straight out Okay, and what, what sort of activity levels are there at the moment? I know the overseas property market is, um, is quieter in some, in some countries, but still people are planning purchases and speaking to you about exchange rates and making transfers? Uh, they are, yes. It's been a little bit busier than, than we'd expected, actually, the last couple of months. I think there's um, a sense that people want to get on with it. Um, we've not had, nobody's had a particularly fun year. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so uh, yes, there, there is still plenty of interest. Quarantine restrictions obviously haven't helped uh, coming in and out and being a little bit unknown with different countries when they're going to be going on and off uh, restriction lists, but we've certainly been busy uh, during this period and I think um, it's one of those things if people want to get, do it then having been fed up most of the year actually it's quite a nice time to think uh, and look forward in, in their lives and go and get on with their dream. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and then just a couple of things then on um, some of the other products you have in terms of um, 
an aspirational rate that somebody might have uh, an instruction to to buy currency on their behalf if it reaches a certain rate yes that, that's the other thing we can do so if um for example if you have a little bit of time on your side and your budget uh, is is looking good for, for where the exchange rate is we can actually set limits where the currency would be bought automatically at a predetermined rate should the market improve so you might say the rates around 129 at the moment for example you could leave an order with us to buy dollars automatically should the rate hit 1.3 or 1.35 so it's a nice way to set yourself a target that will be automatically bought should that rate uh, be achieved obviously the higher you aim the less likely it is uh, that, that will happen so we would work with people on their time scales and help them be realistic with that uh, and the flip side of course if the rate drops similarly we can have an order in to automatically buy at a worst case rate so if your budget is dependent on the exchange rate being above a certain level we can set a, a stop loss order to buy automatically if the market falls as well great okay robin so um Thank you for your time this afternoon. If people want to get in touch, they can head over to, uh, well, go straight to a place in the sun currency.com or you can go to a place in the sun digital.co.uk where uh, the currency business has an exhibitor page. Um, my colleague has just whizzed that round on the, on the chat. So there's a link there to the page. Uh, if you have questions for Robin and his team, I know they'll be back hard at it from, uh, from tomorrow morning. So uh, good of you to join us on a Sunday afternoon. Thank you everybody for tuning in. And you now have quick turnaround, time for a cup of tea. At four o'clock, we have our final session of the Florida Property Masterclass, backing the capable, capable hands of Richard Way, talking about owning and letting your Florida property. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Robin. Thank See you, you all shortly. Bye all. Bye-bye.